right, so we're going to start with um, an introduction to like um, StackNet JS. So uh, I asked earlier how many of us are front end developers, Web3 front end developers. So I'm going to ask again how many of us have built user interfaces on StackNet? Uh, very few persons. Wow. So all of us used to write Cairo. Okay, okay, let's start with how many of us are Web3 developers? Still few. How many of us are normal web? You've written programming language in your life before. <laughs> Even if it's HTML, I know there's say HTML and CSS, not programming language. But if you've written HTML and CSS in your life before, let me see your hands up. Okay, okay, we're going somewhere. Then um, now you're yeah, a Web3 developer. Even if you've written Hello World in Solidity. Uh, okay, okay, why didn't somewhere? You've done uh, front end development with ITAS.js. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That means I'm safe. So, uh, since there are very few persons who have probably done stuff with StackNet.js, right? Uh, StackNet.js is, um, should I say, the ethos.js of StackNet. It's basically a JavaScript library you use to um, basically make RPC calls and all those stuff to the blockchain. So, of course, uh, you write Cairo contracts, all those beautiful things you do with StackNet Foundry and Scab, right? But you don't expect your users to head to StackScan, click Connect Wallet, then start looking for ways to interact with your DApp. You have to build a user interface they can use to like um, interact with it. And that's where StackNet.js comes in. So uh, I think uh, development of StackNet.js started in like 2021, 2022. It was started as an initiative by Sian, the founder of StackScan. And um, it has come a long way from how it used to be before. So when I entered, the whole thing was really, really messed up. But now it's a lot better, actually. So like I said, StackNet.js is a JavaScript library that helps you to basically connect your website or your decentralized application to the blockchain. Basically, it helps you create a user interfaces, like I said, that users can interact with. And of course, it uses JavaScript and TypeScript. And um, before we proceed, right? I was really hoping that was my slides. These people want to disgrace me today. I know I, I wrote all these things this morning in my head. I was going to do with slides, but it's fine. So um, as I was saying, we're going to be looking at um, some very important tools that you can use or that can aid your front-end development on StackNet. And um, there are, uh, we're going to be looking at three important tools. So we're going to be looking at StackNet.js, we're going to be looking at StackNet Kit, and we're going to be looking at StackNet Scaffold. So uh, I just started with StackNet.js, right? And um, now I said StackNet.js is a library used to be user interfaces. And basically to use StackNet.js, there are very three important, three things you need to understand. It's basically, like I said, if you've built with they they are the same concepts basically. So the first is like the provider, the provider. So uh, the provider is an API from StackNet.js that enables you to interact with StackNet. So in simple terms, the provider enables you make read calls to the blockchain. So um, with the provider, you probably do not need an account to like make, make read calls to the blockchain, right? But the caveat there is you cannot modify the state of the blockchain. You can only read from it, but you cannot modify the state. From the provider, we're going to enter the signer, which is the second important component I want us to talk about. Now, the signer API is basically what allows you sign transactions. Hallelujah. Okay, but where are we past this? You just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. So the sign API, <laughs> yeah, the sign API simply allows you sign transactions, and um, it's one of uh, the key components in your account. Now the account is the third component. We probably have less than fifteen minutes. Just next, next, sir. Uh, yeah, the account API. Basically extends the primary features of the provider um, the provider API and the signer API. So the account API 
is basically what enables you not just read the state alone, but modify the state of the blockchain. Now, um, your Argentex account, your Bravos account, all those things, right? They function with the account API. Now, the last thing I want us to look at is the contract. Oh, that's not here. It's not in my slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not in my slides. So, yeah, contracts are primarily how we create instantiations of our smart contracts with JavaScript. So to create a contract, basically, you need to take in the contract ABI, the contract address, and the RPC provider. I know these things are boring. It would have been better. I wanted us to do a live coding session, but they don't want, they don't want to give me code. But it's fine. So uh, okay, let's just go back. Back, actually, back. Yeah, yeah. So <sighs> next. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, this is like a very little snippet. Um, where we create an instantiation using the contract API. So as you can see, using the um, JavaScript's new keyword, we create a, an instantiation of the contract API, taking in the contract API, the contract address, and um, the account, basically. So like I said, the account is a combination of the RPC provider and the signer. And um, I don't know why the whole thing is messed up. But basically, this is like a snip, simple snip. We're going to look at the code, basically. I don't even know if we can, but I, I think I linked to the GitHub, so we should be able to. So, but this is like a simple snippet that instantiates a contract and then uses it to call the increment function on a smart contract. So as you can see, it's actually very simple to do this. You just uh, um, import the contract API from StackNet.js. You have to have StackNet.js installed. And, um, you pass in the contract ABI, the contract address, and um, the account, and simply just call the increment um, function on your contract. So uh, getting started with StackNet Kit. So uh, StackNet Kit basically is another JavaScript library that um, we created at Argent. So it's basically a, a development SDK that enables you create um, wallet connections. So that's basically enable you connect your dApps to, um, to StackNet, right? So before StackNet kit, we had, uh, what was the name again? We had get StackNet. Did anybody use get StackNet? Nobody. You did. Oh, God bless you, sir. So um, uh, what's it called? Get StackNet had some issues, right? Apart from the fact that it was no modular and all. There was a lot of, uh, should I say, politics. It was always very difficult to like update, get StackNet. And um, we thought that we could actually create something better. And that was why we worked on StackNet Kit. So like I said, StackNet Kit is development SDK that um, enables you to create wallet connections and interact with dApps on StackNet. So uh, there are some key advantages of StackNet Kit uh, where it like, it excels over get StackNet. First of all, it's very easy to implement. We're going to see the implementation in the next slide. But no matter your skill level, you should not have troubles with integrating StackNet Kit. Even if you've just written HTML, okay, that's a lie. But <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, let's say, let's say uh, you you probably done something with JavaScript. So even if it's hello world, you've written in JavaScript, uh, it's actually very very easy to implement. You just need like one or two lines of code, in as much as you use StackNet React, right? And we have negative, oh, people should listen to me now. Yeah, and you have a very detailed documentation to help you at stacknetkits.com slash dog slash getting started. And of course, it's, uh, there's flexible customizations. You can customize, or like get, get StackNet, right? You have the ability to choose which um, wallet you want to show to your dApps. So you can decide, okay, I want to just show Argent on Bravo, so I want to just show Bravo, so I want to just show Argent Mobile. You have the ability to like customize the um, customize the wallet you want to show. Then of course you have the ability to add custom connectors. Now this is like um, uh, the beauty of StackNet Kit, right? And we had excels a lot over like the existing Get StackNet library. So with uh, StackNet Kit, like I said, you can add custom connectors. So connectors basically, uh, in simple terms, are just wallets. 
And um, for example, for those who have been following um, the token bound projects we've been working on our Starknet Africa, we built a connector to enable you like um, connect um, your token bound accounts to like Starknet because uh, we had, uh, should I say we had an issue initially, which was the fact that you couldn't connect to dApps the way you would connect to the normal wallet since like uh, in that uh, your NFT details right, which was used to create the token bound account. Let's just just not going into it, right? But then, because Starknet Kit is, um, was built to be modular, it means that after creating our connector at Starknet Africa, we could simply just open a pull request to Starknet Kit to get our connector added. And you who um, needs to probably integrate something to connect user suite, you can just integrate Starknet Kit and you have access to like all the connectors, including like um, the token bound connector. Uh, let's, let's go to the next page. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, uh, if you wrote HTML and CSS, you cannot cram this thing and write it. I was not lying. So, uh, import, you just need to import the connect and disconnect method. And, yeah, get the wallet object, call how it connects, get the wallet object. It's very simple. Uh, le le let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so introducing the stack next scaffold. Um, so uh, I think a lot of us are very popular, uh, very familiar with Starkness Cafe, especially those who came from Blockheader. Um, where's my Starkness Cafe contributors? Ah, with you, but it's fine. So uh, Starkness Cafe it was a community initiative, basically. The idea was because uh, I, I, I think one of the issues we face uh, currently in the Starknet ecosystem is like, um, because the ecosystem is young and it's mature, um, there are just a lot of tools and coming in as a new developer, it's very easy to like get confused. It's very easy to like, um, to, it's, it's, it's very difficult looking for the right tools, right, to use for development. So the idea of Starknet Scaffold was, um, was gotten from It's Scaffold. How many of us know It's Scaffold by, uh, yeah, yeah, Austin, yeah. So, uh, the idea of Starknet Scaffold basically was to create something like It's Scaffold. Uh, basically you have, all the tools you need, right, to take your dabs from rapid prototyping to like um, production grid. And um, it's something we've been working on, and it's mostly the community that have been contributing. And with Starkness Scaffold, you have access to like a lot of UI components. For example, you have like access to a very, very, very beautiful, um, what's it called? Connect Wallet model, something very similar to Wallet Connect, right? And it supports all. Um, all the wallets on StackNet, both injected, um, Agent Mobile, Agent Web Wallet, Bravos, it supports all wallets. And um, you have access to stuff like um, a transaction tracker. Is it because, yeah, it's customizable, very customizable. Yeah. So the, that was the idea basically to help our, our back end developers who, know nothing about um, front-end development, people like me, but want to want to um, build user interfaces, right? You could just use Starknet Scaffold, which I wanted us to do, but somehow the media team said no. So, so okay, you want to ask a question? Can you just allow me, let me, let me, yeah. So, like I said, it contains like um, a lot of, um, a lot of tools put together, like important tools in the ecosystem from the smart, from the smart contract aspect to the front end aspect. There's Starknet Scaffold, sorry, there's Starknet Foundry, there's Cub, and there are also like um, different examples on how to probably write, deploy scripts. And we also have amazing scripts. I wish I could show us these things, well. Okay, let, 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 let. <laughs> okay, ca ca can you click on the link? Let me see if we can get there. So, so can you click on the link? Okay. Yeah, so as I was saying, right, we'll wait for them to click on the link. So it contains different features. Uh, Stacking Scaffold um, brings you different features, such as, like I said, out-of-the-box UI components, 
um, there are scripts to make your life easier. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, to use the next scaffold, right, is like super easy, right? You can either clone the, um, if you're super technical, you can clone the repository and play around with it, or you can just use like um, the npx command. So we have an npm package, just run npx create stacknet app, and um, you have two options, right? You have the basic options, you have the debugger option. So the basic option is just for people who are looking for like just the UI, you just need the UI and probably the contract aspect. The debugger options is if you're looking like um, for advanced debugger options, we have like a burner wallet to play with um, during de um, during development. We have like um, a deployer from which you can probably declare and deploy um, smart contracts. We have, um, we have um, what's it called? Yeah, we have the Wikipedia resources for if you're basically, if, you, if you're new to development, right? You have like a list of resources and tools you can reference. We have, um, there's something I'm missing, something I'm missing. Please click on try online. I'll bring this fuzzy. Yeah, so uh, Ed, you have you have, you have an interface like yeah 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 you have the faucets from which you can get um, testnet it or testnet sepolia to try out, and then click on connect. Yeah yeah you can see that that looks like what well, is that not beautiful? Would you have built this if we left you? Sorry, five minutes. Ah, five minutes. Yeah yeah. So as I was saying, you have access to all these components and. It makes development easier. It means you don't have to build all these things from scratch, right? We have all these things built out for you, and you can just go straight to the point. Uh, because of time, let's just move on. Thank you, sir. Let's, let's go back to the slide. Yeah, yeah, just next week, next week. Next page, next page, don't worry. Yeah, like I said, we have scripts that can help make your life easier. There are different PM scripts. For example, if you play around Stack Foundry, you know that uh, most times if you want to deploy, you want to declare, there's always these long, long things you have to write in your terminal. We have scripts to simplify that. So you just write MPN, um, run, deploy, contract, run, deploy, accounts, blah, blah, blah. We have scripts to like help do all those. Next. Yeah, yeah, so we are actually supposed to do an online coding session, but shows the code. Okay, I just click on click on that. It's not clickable. Wow. I I I'll work on it later. Uh, but but is there any way they can have access to the slides? I don't want to say thank you yet, too. I don't know why people want to thank you. <laughs> Shout thank you. Yeah, yeah, I forgot uh, to add that. Um, we're actually looking for contributors. So uh, if you're a front end developer and um, you're looking to contribute, <laughs> you're looking to contribute to something, we, we, we pay well. We actually pay well. He wants to buy iPhone 14 Pro. This is the chance now. Come and contribute to Stack Nesca Food. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, we, we have a Telegram group, actually. I, I, I will add everything to the slide. How we have access to the slides? Join, join the Stack Nesca Africa community. I'll share it there. What's my Twitter? Um, 0x Darlington. <laughs> 